What's up, everyone? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Oh, this thing is beautiful. This is a Marshall 2959. There were maybe around 150 of these made between 1978 and 1980. A super lead style layout in here with a few notable additions and tweaks. These originally came with built-in reverb. So yeah, a super lead with reverb. The reverb's been removed in this app by a previous owner though, which I'm not really complaining about because I would probably never use the spring reverb. And as we all know, anyone who has owned an app with spring reverb, you're driving around with it in the car and you hear that ting, 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 and you go, why do I want spring reverb in the app? Aside from that, the tone stack on this is also a little bit different as well. It's a plate driven tone stack. So there's no cathode follower in there like on a classic Marshall. Means you just have to set it up a little bit differently. As we heard in the intro, it definitely does the 70s Marshall thing. The channels on this are actually internally jumpered. There's no 16 ohm speaker output. Uh, these two inputs over here don't seem to do anything. I think the originals had a foot switchable boost as well. That's been removed from this particular app at some point over its life. But yeah, this popped up on local marketplace. I'd seen it and then I saw Jason at Headfirst do a video about an all original 2959 and chatting to my good friend Troy Nababan. He sent me a message and said, hey, have you watched Jason's video on this? This one's local. And I went and bought it because I've been wanting a 70s Marshall for a long time. But that thing that we heard in the intro, it's just you know, something that is so like foundational to so many of my favorite records and so many of my favorite players that I knew at some point I was gonna get a 70s Marshall. This one popped up and I figured because it doesn't have the reverb, but it has the extra tube already in there, it would make a great modding platform. So this one's gonna go over to Jason at some point. He's gonna do some mods while still trying to keep the character of the amp intact. We want it to be as reversible as possible, again, because these are rare. The fact this had already been modded makes me feel a lot less bad about doing some further mods to it and maybe making it, let's say, a little bit more versatile for this kind of setting because this is just so loud. It's so loud. I plugged it in for about three seconds through a four by 12 and cranked it. And it was like an atomic bomb going off. It's like divorce levels of volume, put it that way. So running it through the load box in my free cab IR at the moment, I said it didn't have the typical Marshall tone stack. The JTM 45 reissue that I have, if you turn all the controls down to zero, uh, you still get sound passing through the amp. Uh, you turn them down on this and you know, there's no sound coming out of the amp. You just crack the treble though. I said the channels were internally jumpered, so I could set this one up uh, the way I've got it at the moment, or I could just use the second volume over here, bring it up and then dial in like a little bit of volume one to make it nice and chimey. <laughs>
pretty amazing clean sounds out of that on the single coil modes of this guitar. And then again, you can kind of hit it hard with humbuckers. The vibe that it gives me is like a little bit of that ACDC Power Age sound and a little bit of rainbow, long live rock and roll, like that era of loud Marshall sounds in there. As you can kind of hear in there, with the tone stack the way it is at the moment, you push the bass in the middle too much, it gets really flubby really quickly when you're driving it in there. I have seen people compare this to the way you might use a Mark series amp where you think of the bass, middle and treble as like different volume controls for different frequency bands, which I have found pretty helpful when dialing this in, but you don't have to really try that hard. You know, once you get the volume up to around noon on there, take some bass out, uh, be conservative with the mids on there. Normally with an app like this, I'd crank the mids right up and then treble somewhere above noon. Does a great rock and roll sound on there. Makes me want to play this all importantly. <laughs> So glad, one, that I was able to find this amp and pick it up. Very, very fortunate. Normally these kind of things get snapped up really quickly. Secondly, that I live in the age where reactive loads and cabinet IRs are widely available, affordable and great sounding. So I can actually run this here at home and enjoy the experience of cranking this thing up at a scalable volume. And that is one thing that I do wanna address when I send this amp out to Headfirst to get modded. Some things that will maybe let me use it <laughs> through a cabinet in this room, again, so that it's not at divorce levels in there. And also you can hear in there compared to like a typical 1959 super lead circuit. It's like a little bit undergained. I think the amp just needs a service as well, pushing it too hard. There's like a little bit of crossover distortion and a few other things. So it needs, to have a birthday, to have some love and have an absolute expert look at it. I've been talking about Jason from Headfirst a lot in this video. You should definitely go and subscribe to the Headfirst Amps channel. It's a wealth of knowledge and Jason's original designs and mods are amazing. So stay tuned for the next part of the evolution with this amp. I'm really looking forward to basically using it a whole bunch, making some music on it, using it in my YouTube videos here. And I guess trying to just preserve the thing that is great about these old amps. It's 40 plus years old now. So these things are getting on in hardware terms and they deserve to be looked after in my opinion. You know, not saying that like they have to be kept in absolute pristine showroom factory condition or anything like that, but they deserve to be used in my opinion. So that's the reason why I bought this amp. I was lucky enough to find it and to be able to jump on it. And that's why, like I said, I wanna have a few things done to this to preserve it, to make a whole bunch of glorious guitar noises with it and share it with all of you. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Have you tried or do you own a 2959? Let me know stuff about it. I don't really know anything about this amp. I've just been turning the knobs and cranking it up. And uh, it's kind of a really weird one in the Marshall lineup there. I know they made a few other amps with similar tone stacks. And there were also a few Park amplifier branded designs that we don't normally associate with Marshalls from this era. And one last thing I do have to say, for me, these are the best looking Marshall heads. And that's also another reason why I bought this. Just looking at this makes me want to pick up my guitar plug this in and play it because when I think of all my favorite classic rock and classic heavy metal albums, there's like a wall of these things behind all those guitar players, whether it's ACDC, Judas Priest, Accept, Michael Schenker, Rainbow. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful thing. And you know what else? This amp actually smells really good as well, which is the one thing no amp modeler will be able to capture the smell unless we can capture it and release it as a cologne. But I should probably all play you out at this point because I'm starting to get crazy ideas. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Tell me about your favorite Marshalls in the comments section below. And what riff am I gonna play? I just said 
Judas Priest. So maybe this. <laughs> 